This here is the electronic coin acceptor module that I use on my Pepsi vending machine. This thing here is programmed to take Canadian quarters, nickels, dimes, loonies, and toonies. It also works with American coins up to uh, 25 cents as well. Now this particular unit here, if I put in any kind of money right now, because it's currently not plugged in, it's all just going to fall out of the bottom here. But it's a fairly advanced piece of equipment here. It is computerized. It's I can hold escrow. I can do a whole bunch of things here, and it'll give me back my money if I so desire. But this is just for the Pepsi vending machine using its fantastic little Jones plug. The Rao vending machine coin acceptor and uh, accumulation device is a little bit different. Ugh. Ugh. Look at the size of this thing. Absolutely massive. And there's even more going on on the back side here too. And I'm going to explain to you what the hell's going on here. And let's start from the very top. So on this unit here, we do actually have this connector right here. And that's actually what plugs into the entire vending machine itself. This is where all the signals operate through. On the side of the unit, however, we have this lever right here. And that's actually our coin reject unit here. And you can see it's pulling this mechanism here and on the back side, it's also doing a whole bunch of madness. But we're going to start off with this little plastic device in the very top here, which is about the only plastic I'd like to point out that's on this thing. And we'll get it more onto that plastic later. But I release one clip, pull down that spring, and that just kind of comes out here. And this is a fairly standard device here. This one here is set up currently for Canadian currency. Don't know the exact model of it, manufactured by CoinCo. Contains a magnet, contains a couple of um, weighted springs and levers. You can see some of the counterweights here. And again, it takes this particular unit here, it takes quarters, nickels, and dimes. It will not take loonies or toonies. Those just simply did not exist yet when this thing was manufactured. But the idea is here, and I'm hoping that I can be able to show this here because we are on a bit of an angle for this camera, is that if I put in a dime, whoops, that didn't work at all. That's another problem here. I've oiled this once up already and it's still misbehaving. But if I were to put in a dime, if I were to put in a quarter, or if I were to put into a nickel, when I lift this up, you should see that the coins go into different locations here because on the very bottom of this, there's actually little guides that are slotted. And that just basically is um, for that particular um, five, 10 or 25 cent. The giant opening that you see over here for example, if I drop a penny in, it just jams into the machine. So when I use the reject, that just spits it back out over on the reject side here. But anyways, so the coins come out of this device here. Now they've been separated into their 5, 10, and 25. The device that's next to that, that's just below that, if I can release it, is the totalizing module. And this here is a patenting piece of art. There's so many patents I've looked over trying to find information on this here. And it occurs to me, this is an electromechanical, I don't know if I want to call it an analog computer, but it's doing some really, really cool stuff here. So with this unit here, I've had to take all the screws out. I'm going to take one more screw out so I can remove the plastic. And that's going to leave us with this little assembly here. Now there's a couple of little whiskers here and there's these weighted bars located right here. And what's supposed to happen is on the very top here, again, these are those slots. So when the coins drop down into through here, um, what will happen is that, and this may work, it may not work, and I'll get to that in a moment, if I were to drop uh, five cents in through the, is this the five cent slot? I know, let's just put the coin acceptor on top of it and see what it does. Five cents. Oh, oh, no, that jammed. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, how about 25 cents? Okay, that just fell through as well. Is this actually even working right now? Yes, no, it is not. All right. Anyways, what's supposed to happen right here is that the coins go through and they strike these little tiny whiskers here. And these cause these little cog bars to drop down. So if I add 25 cents, It'll go all the way down. Now I've effectively have a dollar and I'll reset it here. Whoops, I think I went the wrong way. Nope, that worked. So let's see, 25, oh, jammed. It's still jammed, there we go. 50, 75, 
And if I reset that, and I go with the small one here, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 60, 65, 70, 75, and add a quarter, that'll bring it all the way down to the bottom here. Now, the only thing these bars are doing is that they're moving on this little tiny guide peg that's just barely visible right here. Anyways, the reason why this thing is jamming right now is that you may have noticed up here there's a, a bit of broken plastic. And what happened is that these bars are weighted with a steel rod inside and encapsulated in plastic. And over time, the plastic has shrunk, but the metal rod has not. So these have actually broken up into several pieces inside this little box here. And it's actually no longer a nice straight um, rack and pinion. So it'll constantly jam up on the gears like that. But anyways, what is this little tiny mechanism down here doing? Well, if I put this back into the machine here, and this will take a moment. There we go. So what's happening here is that it latches into a little tiny metal pin. And if we look on the back side here, you find that there is this rod here and it goes with this little tiny disc that rotate a uh, little tiny arm and contacts that rotates around and if you could look really closely here you'll see that all the way around on each and every single one of these contacts it's a five cent increment so if i were to reset this thing there we go that puts us to zero cents so if i were to add 25 cents to the machine assuming this thing was properly aligned and calibra calibrated it'll give me 25 cents another t add another 25 I go to 50, another 25, 75, another 25, gets me $1. And I can reset that again, and we'll do it with the 5 cent here. But you get the idea. Anyways, each of these jumpers here correspond to one of the 13 doors on the front of the vending machine. So when you hit that increment there, it sends a signal which allows the solenoid to fire saying this much money has been added into the machine, you can now unlock this door. And then there's this ridiculous motor assembly down here. I'm not entirely sure yet what this does. This switch down here is broken, but when this motor operates, it just seems that all it does is the exact same purpose of the coin release here. And I haven't yet powered this up to verify why exactly it does this. Hold up. One second. Now I remember exactly what the hell that motor does down there. So, remember how I said it was, it does, does almost the same thing? It's true. It does almost the same thing on the reset. However, the coin bucket, if you look closely at the patent again, opens on two different sides here. And it has one spring that retains it. So when I do the coin return, it does actually spit out the coins again out the bottom on this side. However, when the motor activates, it makes the coin bucket open on the other side, which then dumps the coins down into the coin box. So I'm assuming the motor then is part of the, I don't know, we'll call it the vending machine um, reset circuit, because I'm assuming like once the door, like once you've closed your selection door, it resets the machine and I guess it just runs the motor. Okay, anyways, yeah. What was I saying before in the video? Now it comes for the downside of this. Well, this machine here will hold your coins in escrow because it's able to chunk out little tiny coins that are left over as change because it can do the math. This here, unfortunately, has no such ability. There's absolutely nowhere in here that you can actually store, add coins, and it'll give you money back as change or escrow. So, well, no, I'm sorry, not as escrow. Blah, that means it wouldn't give the money back anyways. That's what the coin returns for. Blah. No, um, if you were to say have a product which is 95 cents in the machine and you only had four quarters on you, you would put those four quarters in, you could select your product. It's not going to give you that five cents back. It's just going to uh, uh, drop that into the coin box in the machine. You're never going to get it back. Kind of a, yeah, not really a fair way to do it. But then again, that's why these little tiny coin acceptors came along and replaced every single thing about this. By the way, I'm assuming this is running at 120 volts because within that vending machine again, I'm not seeing a transformer to indicate there's any form of low voltage signaling. It's all 120. Absolutely terrifying. But this is this this is this is the kind of thing I want to have like hung up on a wall. It's a beautiful piece of electromechanical art. I dare say 
in its whole, it's an analog computer because it's literally taking um, a metal disc of a certain size and weight and it's converting it into an electrical signal just simply by weights, levers, and gears. That's all there is to it. And I love it. <laughs>